sort of. Um, so I'll start. Well, okay, so I was having a hard time figuring out exactly what I wanted to bring to the group tonight. So Ian and I hopped on a call the other day. And as always, as his gifts, you know, precede him, he helped me clarify where my mind is at um, and what I want to bring to the group. But the first thing that came up that I wanted to make sure that I reiterated to you guys was just how thankful I am for all of you that this is um, such a unique, safe space where, sorry, Bill, I'm not going to talk about acting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I realized like that's my go-to because that is my passion and like what I want to do in some capacity at some point in life but it kind of felt like a cop-out to talk about like okay you guys maybe like how do I I already know what hoops to jump through to for, for whatever for a laundry list of reasons it kind of felt like a cop-out so Ian kind of helped me narrow down get get to kind of the heart of what is really pressing me lately and I thought about, I was like, oh, that didn't even come to my mind at first because it's something that I don't bring up to people because I'm just like, I'm not trying to hear people's opinions about it. <laughs> and like people really, this particular topic that I'm going to bring up, I feel like there's a lot of projection. Um, so I'd rather just like save my energy and my time and not talk about it with anybody. Uh, but I am so excited that this is the maybe the one and only space where I am not only willing, but excited to talk about this with you guys because you provide such a safe space of encouragement and healthy criti constructive criticism and encouragement. Um, it's such a unique perspective that I can't wait to hear what you all might have to say about, if anything, what I'm gonna share. So first, thank you guys. Um, second is, yeah, what I'm gonna talk about. So there's been something that's kind of been creeping up in my heart over the last year or two and it's a uh, motherhood. So I feel this, I don't know what other way to put it than a calling in my heart. I don't, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> um, to be a, a, a mother in it's, it's strange because it feels like something I feel intrinsically designed to do. And I recognize not every woman feels that way but that's how I feel at this point in my life. Um, but it's something that I kind of have no control over because I don't feel it so much so in a way that I'm willing to be a single mother or to adopt. I want to be um, part of a family. So that requires a partner. And um, I don't feel so attached to the idea that I'm willing to force that scenario before it's appropriate or natural. Um, but so then I feel this like, strange conflict in my life of like what I feel designed and desiring to do, but something that I can't make happen. And it's so weird that I, I guess the only thing that I can focus on at this point is preparation for when that opportunity does come my way. Uh, but then is that unhealthy to what if it doesn't? I mean, I, I, I believe that because it's been placed on my heart that it will happen at some point. But I also don't want to get attached to an idea of the future and then suffer from um, attachment to an expectation. Uh, and then I also just started dating somebody the last couple of months, and it's the most uh, loving and healthy situation I've ever been in so far, which has really thrown my nervous system for a loop. And it's like combined with this desire for motherhood and being the first and only so far healthy dynamic I've ever been in. I'm like, okay, this is it. <laughs> and like, uh, we kind of had like a little hiccup last week, you know, as since it's still so early, we're still getting to know each other and some feathers were ruffled and we were able to communicate through it. But what made me really nervous was in the, in the crux of the, of the, while we were in like in the thick of the issue, I totally lost control of my nervous system. And I couldn't eat. I had anxiety. It wasn't even that big of a, an issue, but that it made me realize where I need to grow uh, in regards to making sure that I'm as healthy as an individual as possible in what I'm bringing to the partnership and or if it does end up in parenthood um, in that I don't want any kind of dynamic to be rooted in attachment or fear. I just don't know how to not because 
not to toot my own horn, but I've done a lot of work where it is, it takes a lot to trigger that in any other context, whether it's like work or friendship or life or whatever. I've done a lot of work to have a healthy relationship with non-attachment and to like kind of be a more go with the flow, unconditional loving kind of person and know that like, no matter what happens, everything is happening the way it's meant to, so to speak. Uh, and romantic relationships have proven to be my kryptonite where as soon as I think that this is a good thing and it doesn't go or the what I'm perceiving as the threat of loss comes up, I short circuit. And so um, because I don't know how to deal with these triggers until they're triggered, which is like a very rare training ground that comes up. So every time it happens, I'm like, OK, well, just make sure it doesn't happen next time. And the next time is so far and few in between that I don't really know how to work on something that is most of the time invisible, if you know what I mean. Um, and then motherhood, which is something that I'm like, I don't know when or if it will ever happen, but it's something that I feel like if you were to ask me right now, like, okay, what would your dream scenario be tomorrow? It would be, um, I would be a stay at home mom of like, multiple children in a loving relationship and um and it would just be like an honor to be a, a portal and like a steward in that way um you know pursuing other like hobbies on the side but that's 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 it for me maybe theater on the side you know to do like to fulfill my acting desire and so I, I guess I don't really know what that looks like in regards to like what I'm asking for feedback on, but if there is, was any kind of like, I know that's kind of a lot and it's, it's not, it's, that's a lot really vague. There's like the relationship aspect and there's the motherhood aspect, but I don't know, Ian, maybe you can help me <laughs> to like further define exactly what perhaps it is I'm actually even saying or asking for feedback on. But um, if you guys, if there's anything on your heart already with what I've said in regards to like encouragement or, or advice, I don't know what the fuck to do right now <laughs> with what I'm feeling. <laughs> and what, like, I feel right now in my life, I'm just like waiting for something to happen. And I don't like that feeling at all. I'm a proactive person and I'm a fearless person, but I feel like the things that I desire right now are not in my control. I don't know how to make them happen. So what I what do I do? How do I responsibly steward the time that is now? Any feedback? I w I would say just you know just just have them, just just have them. <laughs> like just they don't even don't even think about it. Like, I don't <laughs> people do it every day. Like, I, like if you want to have kids, like. You know, you should have them. Like, and I think it's something special too, because today, like a lot of, a lot of people, you know, they probably don't want to have as many kids or have any kids. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it's definitely commendable, and um, you know, because I feel like it might be something that's lost, like people that have like a desire to, you know, raise someone, another human life, like. I think it's special. So, um, you know, I guess the biggest thing maybe is making sure you find the right person to have a kid with. Like, cause, you know, it's, it's going to be a long time. But I feel like having a kid is... I am like almost 32. The clock is ticking. And I don't want that to also, like, you, you know, change. Like, it, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to be hunched over trying to play catch with my kid, you know what I mean? But you can, though. You can like you could be like you could have you could be like my mom had my youngest brother when she was like forty, I think like forty four. Mm. So, and she had a bunch of kids before that. So, like, but yeah, yeah, I, I think you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rush. I would make sure, like this person that you're dating, just give it time. Don't like push it too hard. And as long as like they have like a a, a similar kind of thing in mind, because it might be like, what's it gonna be? By the time you end up having kids, is there gonna be like a couple of years down the road, or a year down the road, two years? Are you gonna just get married tomorrow? 
who knows? That's the thing. I I think uh, I'm a pretty spontaneous person, but I'm also a really responsible person. And so there's, you know, the, the give and take, there's the give and pull with that. Um, and he's also on the same page. He's 43 and he's ready and willing to have a family as well. But obviously you don't oh. want to shotgun anything. Um, and yeah, it's only been a couple months. It's not like we're that far along in our relationship at all, but at least we're on the same page with what we want down the road. Um, but yeah, I just don't want to get like fixated on something and then be devastated. If you know, there's, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, how long did y'all know each other? I know y'all just started dating, but how long did y'all know each other? About a year. Yeah. You know, like, you know, know each other's friends or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You met the it's family? All... Most, yeah, some. Because, you know, family's crazy. <laughs> like, family is, <laughs> I mean, just, but like, I don't even introduce people to my family. Yeah. Like, into my own little group like this is I, just, I tuck them away and I go visit every day I go visit every day but I don't, I don't. yeah no but but you but like if I was like if I'm with somebody like they're gonna eventually they're gonna have to see them all and they're gonna have to get their hair anointed with oil from my mom yo all oh. right as, as much as I'm enjoying this conversation I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pass it and see if anyone else uh, has any questions or comments. I would yeah. like to say a couple of things to you, if you're willing to hear me. Um, first of all, when you talk, you're attached to not being attached. So there, so do you see? There is nowhere to go from attachment, not the way on a psychological, mental level. So I'm only sharing with you as I listen to you, you're attached to who you have to be before you have a child. Mm -hmm. You have to have a man. You have to have a good relationship. In other words, all of these are ideas that you believe. I, I'm not saying anything is wrong or right about it, but I'm just saying it's delusionary to believe that we're not attached. Because being attached to not being attached is an attachment. Mm -hmm. And just because you've been able to 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 fashion your life in such a way that very few things trigger you, that doesn't mean it's not there or it would never have been triggered with this man. Yeah. Okay. So you've managed it, but that doesn't mean it's gone. So that's yeah. the first thing that I heard it, that you were saying. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that's the first thing I heard. The other thing I hear from you is that you have a whole list of the way it has to look. So I understand why you're worried that if it doesn't meet your picture, you're going to be, I don't know if you use the word devastated, but you're going to suffer from it in some way. Yeah. Okay. So there can't be any, any spontaneous unfolding of life. If you've already created the only way it's acceptable and what it has to look like. The third thing that I think is that relationships take a long time for two people to, re and I'm not saying, I'm not talking about lust and love and desire and all those things, okay, they're instant. But I'm talking about learning how to be in a relationship with someone and share a life. That takes time and energy. Mm -hmm. And as any parent on this show will tell you, once you have a child, there's only one person that your maternal instinct will allow you to make first. And that's your child, and it is not your husband, no matter what you think, because these are hormones carousing through your body that was holding this life. And even though the life is outside of you, my sons are in their late 50s. I know from the minute they say hello, if there's something wrong, I know without even speaking to them. And I'll call them and say, are you okay? All right. And I don't think that's unique. I think it just comes with the package of being a parent. So it seems to me that when you have a solid foundation in a relationship and then the two of you decide to have a child, now you know how to work out your differences. Now you know how to, to, to get along. You, you've learned a lot about each other and you're still together and still loving each other. Yeah. That's all I, I think that's the, I have no idea what that looks like because I don't have any examples of that in my life. 
So I, I don't have like an idea of like the um the aesthetic or like the 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 outwardness of that of my desire. Like the only thing that I the only prerequisite that I would like before having kids is that I'm in a loving relationship. I want I don't want just just to be a mom. I I want to be a a partner to like a teammate, somebody that I trust and somebody that we're like on the same page. Um, but yeah, I just don't know. Well, actually, I think you know more than you think you know, and you keep saying you don't know. But you just yeah. explained that when you and he had a disagreement, you were able to work through it. Yeah. Okay. So to me, that's a very important sign because mm -hmm. life brings up stuff. Yeah. And after a little while, depending on how that is for you or how long that is for you, all of our ego structure and the other person's ego structure arises in the relationship. And if we don't know how to work through it and we don't know how to have clear communication tools when we're really disagreeing yeah. about some very important things, then no matter how much love you have, it will die. Yeah. Because you can't really nurture love if there isn't respect and trust and ability mm -hmm. to communicate and honesty. So I think you know more than you think you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna try a, a, a feedback question, if that's okay. Um, hi, Catherine. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, it's great to hear you. Um, this is not my area, you know, I'm going to try something, but this I'm not a parent. Um, and I think most people, well, most people, I don't know, people who are older, <laughs> the the older generation here, I think they're, uh, the other ones are parents. Anyway, maybe I'm wrong. Um, so I'm not in my depth, but I'll, I, what I'm curious about is when you say you feel this calling, I assume it's like a love that's within you that, you that that feels a calling to extend to a to a new life in a maternal way. Uh, if that's wrong, you can correct me, but that's where I'm, my, my assumption is. So what I would offer is to spend more time and you can do start with us, but with with whether it's like a therapist or a friend or whoever you just whoever you feel comfortable talking to, spend more time unearthing that. Emo emoting around that i want you know what you know whether it's crying or or laughing or you know emoting what is that you know because is that a pat you know is that a feeling that's deep enough to sustain you for a life of, of parenthood is it something that is more of a, you know and, and there were i don't know how to i don't know how to express myself but is it is it is it is it deep enough and profound enough and fulsome enough that it will take you through a lifetime of being a parent because as, as Rada said, once you're a parent, I drove my mother, you know, my mother, you know, whatever. She didn't, you know, she didn't take good care of me when I was young. So I made her take care of me as well. Like, you can be a parent forever. You know, they'll, you know, it's, it's a, it's a lifelong calling and then you're not able to just focus on yourself anymore or you and your partner. Um, so you have to dig deep and unearth, I would think, how profound, how fulsome, how willing are you to change your entire life so that you'll be able to be devoted to the well-being of that child or, or children? With that expressed on my part, so do you feel comfortable saying more to us? Just go into that feeling if you want. What does it feel like? Because I've never had that feeling. What does it feel like to want have that calling in your heart? Um, um it feels overwhelming it feels like um it doesn't feel like it's my it's something bigger than me that a seed was planted at some point and it's like showing up now um it feels like an honor and it just feels like the most beautiful 
and humbling challenge um, I could ever be given the gift of to uh, to steward. It, it's it's the first word that always comes to mind is honor. It's like the biggest honor. I can't believe that the desire was even given to me because I never wanted kids growing up. They freaked me out. I thought I'd break them. Uh, my sister made me her son's godmother at one point, like when he was born. And he's seven now. But when he was born and she gave him to me to hold, I was like, why? I'm, I don't want to hold it. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to break him. Um, and so for something to change beyond my, like my, beyond my doing, um, and to think about, you know, from what I do now, obviously not from experience, but from others, what it takes to steward a life. I can't believe that something or someone gave, planted that desire in me to someday follow through with. So honor is um, definitely the first word that comes to mind always. Let me try just one more way and then I'll yield to the next uh, you know, feedback giver. And what I'm trying to get at also is it like, is, is it for you? Will you be, you know, my sister always said, you know, that she would have been unfulfilled in life if she didn't have kids. She did. So it was fine. It worked mm -hmm. out. But is that something you need for you? Or is it the calling to meet a, or a higher calling that it's for the, what's going to be the benefit of the children? Where do you fit into this? Is it, is it about you you fulfilling your life's mission or is it something different? I don't feel like it's my life mission because I don't feel like the calling was even placed there by me. Um, I think I'd be fine if I never had kids. I've always worked with kids and it's really fulfilling and I love that so much. And I don't think I would feel unfulfilled if that if I never birthed my own. Um, but I do believe that the experience itself would be mutually beneficial because I don't think the call like a desire like that is placed unless it also is it has something for you as well um I do believe that I'm being asked to be a vessel and so in that in that in and of itself is the it's it's that life's it's all about that life that's being designed to come through me um and my responsibility is not to is is simply just to like allow that thing to become what it is in the most safe and healthy environment. Um, and then I will learn my lessons naturally along the way as well as I experience a challenging situation, which is motherhood. <laughs> um, so I do believe it's for me because I will inevitably grow from the experience, but it's not for me in the sense that like it's solely my desire and it's because I want them if that makes any sense. What if they were a flat earther? To somebody else, yeah. <laughs> so what if about flat earth? What if they were a flat earther? <laughs> what was he? Like, what you if had they were what? Joe, no, I didn't hear you say that all again. All of your friends does a flat earth. He said, and what if they were a flat earther? What if your children believe in flat earth? That is... We no, will cross that bridge when question. we get there. <laughs> no, because, I mean, because, like, that, that's your kid. <laughs> And they, they're going around telling everybody that was really a flat earth. Just trust me. And like all your friends are like, yo, is your kid a flat earth too? Like how would how would that make you feel? Would you still want to have kids if you knew they were gonna be a flat earther? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> you so uh, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to make sure like you have them because now you now I know that you have them. Because you like, you want kids. Like, you want, and you, you know, whatever they. Oh, boy. um, Amazing. Um, I'm going to say uh, Bill or Tamar. Is there anything that either of you would like to add? If not. Um, I, I got something to say because, um, yeah, it, it brought up, of course, my own personal life and what I, what you know, I mean, had two kids and, you know. Um, so. um. I'm pretty sure my wife, you know, felt that for whatever reason, I, I don't know how much it felt like an instinct, but for whatever reason, 
having kids was was what she really wanted to do in her life. That's that was the most important thing for her, and she felt ready and willing, able, and um, I don't doubt any of that. But um, how it turned out, you know, it was a mixed bag. Of course, that's life. Um, so, but the only thing that comes to me, okay, I. I went into having kids for the wrong reasons because I thought it's something I should do. It's an experience that I needed to have, whether I was truly prepared for it or not. I felt like I have to, I have to do this, and I I had lots of doubts about it. Okay, so that's that was my situation. But for her, maybe maybe what was involved was that she did. I don't know, you know. Did, or here's what, all right, I'm just saying what I feel maybe that I didn't do enough of either, but I tried, you know, is that I had to continue while I'm, you know, starting to raise a family. I had to continue to deal with my issues, you know, and I had lots of them, <laughs> lots of them. And romantic relationships were less, big time. Okay. So, and I think she had, she had, lots of them too okay um so i'm not saying that we shouldn't have had kids no um but i think that the quality your ability to deal with your issues affects the outcome and it's something you need to keep doing ongoing mm -hmm. you know and it's it's it might not be easy <laughs> But, but but that doesn't mean that you have to wait until you're 40 to have kids when you say, oh, I finally dealt with my issues. No, that's that's not what I'm saying. It's not like that either. You know, and I'm, you know, so it's just an interesting balance here, uh, it, it seems to me, you know, based on my experience. Um, you know, um, I don't regret it. Uh, my kids turned out, you know, I hope my daughter's not listening, you know, reasonably well. Um, but, 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 but they went through a lot of stuff, too. And, um, you, you know, and, and my wife thought she was great at raising children. And, um, well, you know, they went they went through some difficult times, but they, maybe it was meant to happen. Um, you know, those are my reflections about it all. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Sorry about that. I thought you were joking when you said reasonably well. He's like, look the other way. I mean, he's like, he looked out, he's like, reasonably well. I was like, sorry. Well, yo, you are killing so me. I really appreciate that feedback because I've made um, my relationship with myself like my top priority um, over the last few years. And I've been really proud of how I've grown. And I feel like I, have a healthy-ish, a, a relationship that I'm proud of about how I deal with the inevitable ebbs and flows of life until one comes and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> why did this wave take me? Um, and uh, obviously there's no such thing as like a perfect person who is now ready to be a partner or, or a, a parent. Um, and so that you helped me continue to remember that my focus is one of my focuses should be just continuing to learn and grow and lean into how I, how I deal with in my relationship to difficulties and challenges because they are inevitable and continuous. So thank you for that. Yeah. And I'll just chime in and say, Bill, I absolutely love your honesty. It is uh, refreshing and powerful. Um, uh, did I cut off? I did. <laughs> my back oh, i'm back okay i don't know if you guys heard that i just said uh bill absolutely love your honesty it's refreshing and amazing and um tamar i'm gonna throw if, if there's anything you would like to say if not i'm gonna like count to five and if that mute stays off i will say what i've been mm -hmm. thinking there we go.
Well, hi everyone. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Hi. My internet's very unstable. Um, it's particularly bad tonight. So I yeah I heard, I heard most of what was said. I think. Um. Well, as you all probably remember, I had a similar share myself, right? So, you know my thoughts somewhat. Um, I will just add the echo of um that a few people touched on, which is the importance of the partnership. And, you know, I think, you know, you should be proud of yourself for feeling like you found the flow with different types of relationships in your life, like the friendships, work and things like this, found the balance where you can not take things personally and, and so on. And uh, nothing will ever be as triggering <laughs> as a romantic relationship, right? Because yeah. that's where everything exists <laughs> and in the recreation of our, um, you know, our, our, our childhood. So that being said, um, I think focusing on the partnership and the feeling in the partnership and the communication and communication times a thousand and communication and communication, all those, like, cause when you understand the communication style of the person where you're with and you both you both come to a consensus of how you want to talk about things and what things are, are okay to talk about and what what are not um mm -hmm. if some when and if something big happens such as having a kid or an illness god forbid or anything that requires you know high intensity high risk, life and death, um, that's when you really need that foundation. And that does take time uh, and, and intention. So mm -hmm. I highly recommend, you know, uh, you, you'll know when, but to, to be a leader in this, if you, if this is what you want, you know, and, to set the boundaries of what you think is, if something comes up, th this is when you can be, you can lead through vulnerability and lead by example and say, hey, I'm feeling like this. Could we talk about it? Because um, in the beginning, you know, it's really exciting and we can kind of like see some things and then like kind of be like, ah, it's okay. Um. We'll deal with that later. <laughs> um, we all do it. It's normal. And uh, here's a great way to save you a bunch of trouble. <laughs> deal with it now. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's just, you know, general life stuff yeah. with partnership um, that I learned the hard way. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, like, like many people said, like it all comes out with, with children because they're, as my understanding, uh, reflection, a deep reflection of the parents. So, uh, and it's such a charged, um, high pressured, beautiful, important um, experience. So yeah, I think it's beautiful. It's beautiful that you feel that way. And I actually think it's pretty, I don't know, that, that might be my own, mm, my own sort of like re reflection, but I think it's cool that you find yourself in this moment in time where you're, this is something you really want and you can admit it to yourself and it, you want it to be the focus and you're not like, but how do I balance everything, the career, you know, you're just like, no, this is actually what I'm choosing and mm -hmm. this is what's in my heart. And you, you're not, you know, you're not getting sucked to some, the standards of our society, which require women to do everything all the time and be a fucking 10 at it, like that's really, really difficult pressure, right? Do everything, do it all and do it with grace. Um, and it's like you're, you're, you're making something that you feel 
it was a priority a priority and i think that's really amazing and honorable thanks it's so hard because i'm such a uh ambitious like actionable person that as soon as i've in the past ever felt the same kind of feeling in the sense that something's put on my heart and there's a very certain feeling I've only felt it a few times where I know whether or not it's been given to me or it's I've created it in myself. And when I can tell that it's the prior, I do it without thought because I know that it's just by design. And so I trust it, if that makes any sense. And so, but with this, it's like, I, there's no, I can't force this thing. I can't just, okay, sell everything and go backpacking until you run out of money. Okay, bought the ticket the next day. I can't, there's, you know what I mean? There isn't that that um those actions that I can just like independently take uh because it does it's not just me involved you know what I mean so it's like a patient game and so yeah I feel a little stuck but it's incur your encouragement is encouraging um that I can even just be vocal about it well so, and to add to that i you don't mind yeah you um I mean it's corny but like you're putting your intention in it and your intention is also to make a this relationship this partnership a healthy one things will mm -hmm. unfold you know if it's if you really put time and effort and that means doing difficult things together talking about difficult things, opening up. Yeah. If you do that, things will unfold, right? It's kind of inevitable that yeah. that you will that you will see what you need to see. Mm. If you if you put if you put in the intention of time. That so, makes yeah. so much sense I pulled some I have an oracle deck some like animal spirit cards and I pulled some a couple days ago and one of them said I was calling being called upon to be a leader and I was like how is that possible how can I lead this don't things need to just show their colors how can I force so how can I lead and I was totally I was misreading it now and I can I can see you've you've helped me understand what that message was thank you um Quick question though, like, do you love do you love your partner? I mean, we just started dating, so I that's I don't. That's what I was trying. Yeah, so I just started this dating. Is, like this desire has nothing to do with him. That this is something that I feel, and I'm also dating this person that I care about, and so I hope perhaps this will be the, 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 part of the equation. You know what I mean? But they, um, they want kids eventually too, right? Yeah. Y'all done talked about it together? Y'all kind of yeah. just mentioned yeah, it? Yeah, we're on the with our um, future desires, whether or not they're with each other or not. Right. And, like, what, what was... Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think it is... I think you just need to let it... Just just let it take, run its course. Y'all have similar... Y'all on a similar path. Y'all mm -hmm. can go together and just, you know, fill it out. And if it works out, you're in a perfect, you know, I just, you don't have to force it. And you have all the time in the world, like, as far as, like, kids, like, now you can do literally, like, if you wanted to have kids 10 years later, you could have kids 10 years later, and it will be, like, easy. Not, not, well, and you'll be fine doing it. Like, it, it's like a whole different, like, age bracket now, now and day. Mm -hmm. Like, like our, our parents' age brackets, when they had kids and they did everything, it's just different. We kind of, we can, we live for longer periods of time on, on average. And like you beat the odds because like you're healthier than most, you know what I mean? There's like a lot of different, you're not statistically the mean, like, you, you know what I mean? Like as far as, so you, I think you have time to do it all, like do those things and you don't have to feel pressure to rush into anything. Just know that that desire is there and eventually it'll happen. And yeah. 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 Patience is not my strongest trait. <laughs> you can have kids tomorrow with anybody if you want, but. No, absolutely <laughs> not. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, I'm getting, like, in terms of, like, if you really, it's, like, patience or whatever. I'm just saying, like, are y'all y'all going to be monogamous? Yes. We, are you going to be monogamous, like, 10 years down the road? Like, 20 years down the road? I don't know if I'll be alive 10, 10 years down the road. Then why are you having kids? <laughs> what? <laughs> no one knows if I'll be alive tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning on it. <laughs> you're not playing like when you gonna have kids and be like sorry guys i'm out you gotta hold on so joseph is uh, planning on Catherine being alive in 10 years that's what you're saying oh boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm ken, gonna play on being alive in 10 years ken well, what's your question you said you're having your birthday are you asking no, when Kat your birthday is? no Catherine is having a birthday so i thought Maybe it's soon. Maybe it's coming up. January 5th. Oh, okay. You got a little time. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Um, well, yeah, there's, I feel like there's nothing that I really can add that hasn't been said. Um, what I was thinking about, Tamar kind of said most of it more eloquently than I could. Surprise, surprise. But I really think, like, yeah, the a healthy foundation in the relationship is is the key from what I see. Um not that I know too much, but um, but yeah, really, I think just a, a take it a day at a time, and um, when you see things things come up that maybe um, you could see as like yellow flags or potential issues or problems, um, yeah, I think it's really important to consciously note that, and mm -hmm. um, you know, look at it within yourself. And in a way that, and then kind of figure out what's the best way to address said issue. Because like Tamar said, there are like, there's going to be little things where it's like, whoa, whoa, like, I don't love that. And it's very easy to just, um, to just push it aside and be like, and to make some sort of justification. I ain't for, got time for that no more. I'm happier yeah. alone than putting up with people's yellow or red flags. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and it, and it can be really difficult for um a myriad of reasons, but I think, you know, as Tamar said, we've learned that um maybe the harder way, but a lot of times that's how you're going to learn one way or another. And I do think it's um yeah, just the fact that you have this calling, it seems like, you know, it's your purpose. Like this is aligned with your purpose. And like you said if it doesn't happen, then um that's okay. But to have these like these deep divine feelings, um, obviously you realize that it's it's something that um that is super important and which is cool that you brought it up with us and um definitely yeah like Ken said like sit with that live with that like what does that what does that mean to you what does that feel um mm -hmm. dig deeper and um the last thing is um I'm blanking out oh you said patience is um you don't really have much patience um you said that and um i think that it's not um the strongest what trait. it's not your strongest excuse me excuse me <laughs> um yeah this seems like um well first of all you know if you want to have kids you're gonna have to develop some fucking patience <laughs> yeah that's for damn sure so i think um uh, <laughs> seeing it as an opportunity to to grow in in a way that's you know going to be powerful for you your loved ones and hopefully your future family is um is a is an interesting perspective to um to look at it and um and yeah and and I think even thinking about um making some sort of plan making some sort of like you know um tomorrow and I we've talked about it we thought about it it's um it's not like a blind, like, you know, it's not like coming from just one person. There's been a lot of discussions. So I think mm -hmm. that um, we both feel relatively um, prepared and ready for whatever comes next. And I think so making it like, like, you know, as your relationship unfolds, obviously two months, you know, we've been together for like seven years, a little different. But, mm -hmm. um, but as, you know, as you guys get to know each other more and, um, yeah, the relationship gets deeper and deeper, I think, um, having a plan and like discussing a plan, what that looks like. Was it three years, four years? 
Um, it's all, yeah, and, and and I think that might help with some of the the nerves of like, well, I can't wait until I'm 44 or 50, whatever yeah. the case. Like, I just said that because that's what Joe James said. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my um, what came to came with me. Um, I will say, kind of any to anyone else, if there's anything else you want to like wrap up with, or if there's anyone else wants to chime in real quick, uh, getting close to the ending. Um, and yeah, this I was great. One Thank thing you, to Catherine, if I may, Ian, of course, and that is as a parent, you're always well, I won't say about other people, as a parent. My focus is on what's best for my child. Yeah. Most of us live our life what's best for me, which is fine. But then once you have a child, then that becomes the focus. So it seems to me, since your feeling is deep and pure, that you could begin to think that way now. You don't have to wait. In other words, yeah. is it what would be best for my child? Would be best if I learn how to be patient or what motivates me to be impatient. You see what I mean? So that you're actually doing what Bill's suggesting because it is a lifelong process. And to be a good parent, it matters how clear we are, how clean we are of our own ego reactivity. So mm -hmm. that you are still preparing yourself like so many other people said, and you're doing what you said was so important to you, which is your relationship to yourself. Wow. And that in itself is the best you can do for your child. That was going to be my next question. Like my closing question is like, if anybody has a word on like, how do I handle the interim? I, I don't, I don't know what to do with the, 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 the gap between the desire and the out and the, if you know, the pot, the potential manifestation. And that you just thank you, Radha. I needed to hear that. That was so perfect. Yeah, the interim is a time that it ha is happening for a reason. You know, it's it's incubating you time to work on yourself and your patience and your relationship and your wisdom, life wisdom. If you believe that the process happens the way it's meant to happen, the interim is there for you. Me. It may feel, you know, you may feel impatient, frustrated, whatever, but the but it's there for a reason. That's what I would think. Thank you. I, I would say just uh, from everything I've heard you say, um, keep going. Just go, go ahead. I didn't hear anything that would that would make me hesitate and say, hey, wait a minute, that that doesn't sound right to me or anything. You know, it, it sounded all good to me. So I would just keep going with it and where you're going is the way to keep going yeah thank you wow just to reiterate what everybody said like you only have about four months left to have kids so you have to <laughs> <laughs> you better hurry up this is it <laughs> thanks joe james <laughs> well, well on that note um yeah that was powerful thank you so much for sharing that was uh, really yeah. special. We really appreciate it. Um, for Thank anybody you. watching, I hope you got it. What'd you say? I missed that. I said thank you so much to you guys for this for this space. And like I said, I don't bring this up often because with I don't know with society these days, everybody has their opinion about motherhood and their projection about we well, don't need to be a mom to be for the, all these things, and I'm like. I know what I'm feeling and why, so I just don't need <laughs> your input. Um, and maybe that's something I should look at, but I was very excited to come to you guys with it tonight. And I'm really, really thankful for what every single one of you had to say. Well, yeah, I'm glad you uh, you decided to talk about this and not acting, because uh, it seemed like <laughs> that was a wise decision. And, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, if anyone's still watching, Thank you all. This has been a Sacred Inclusion Network Mastermind Group Passion Spotlight. And uh, love y'all. And I'll see you next week. I'll be in touch. Peace. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.